Hello everybody, my name is Nicholas Rivas. I do videos about politics and stuff, and today we're going to be talking about the fun old politics of the CPAC convention. So I used to make a bunch of videos, and then um, I got really sick, and uh, I haven't done a video in a while, and so this is kind of my mini comeback of sorts. Um, also, I just recorded an audio, and it didn't save. My fucking luck, but it's okay. We keep pushing. Um, so right now the CPAC event is starting. This is the big Republican convention. Uh, and Donald Trump, who is now ex-president, is going to be speaking. And this is going to be one of his first talks since the election. Um, so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm kind of doing like a mini live stream of it where I'm just not live. I'm watching it live, waiting for him to come. And he's supposed to be coming out anytime soon. But I've just been watching it all day, trying to wrap my head around what the fuck the Republicans are going Republicans are going to do. And just a quick breakdown. So I was making videos uh, weekly where I play some video games and I talk about politics. Um, but I got COVID, so I don't recommend. It's awful. I made my return after recovering, and and I was working on a video. It took me about three chant like tries to make it. Um, it. It was about you know censorship and parlor and all the stuff that happened with the Capitol riots. But uh, this new video that I've been working on, or that new video, that video that I just uploaded was like the third attempt in trying to figure out what the fuck to do because I would write stuff and then it would be uh, obsolete because some other stuff happened. Like things were going crazy, and so now. Uh, on top of like me getting sick with COVID, um, it's just been a fucking journey, but now I'm back. And, and so now I'm trying to post videos weekly again, where I just do these kind of free form talks. And then I have a big video around the end of the month, the beginning of the month. Um, but yeah, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's where my hiatus is, but I'm going to be returning with one week videos, uh, once a week, every video, um, will just be kind of more free form and stuff. But yeah, uh, so yeah, talking about CPAC, I was... I've been watching it. It's pretty crazy. I don't know how to feel about the Republican Party. I don't think anyone does. I think right now there is a split. But when when Trump first lost, there was a definitely a rift in the party. And I think there is one. But it, I think we're starting to see the colors. I think we're starting to see people wholeheartedly support Trump. The Mitt Romneys of the Republican Party are kind of being dismissed. Make and I, I think that he could easily win the primary. I think Donald Trump can return and win the primary. And I think all of this talk is just bull about him. He do, he doesn't ha he still has power. And I, I think we should be very fearful. And my idea is that there's these establishment Republicans, the Mitt Romneys, to some extent the Ted Cruz's, who have some power. And want, people want those kind of Republicans to harken back to the good old days of the Republican Party rather than this kind of abrasive, shooting from the hip Trump character. There are a lot of people now coming in kind of his favor. There's people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert. They are people who are kind of in the, the Trump wing and people really like them and they're very, very high approval. I'm sure statistically, but more in my circle of, of Republicans and conservatives, they really like those people. And it's crazy because I do see a rift. There are people like my more older conservative friends and, and colleagues and, and family who some of them love the Lauren Boeberts, the, the, the shooting from the hip Republicans who are kind of QAnons, kind of Trump sycophants. And then there's those who are Mitt Romney-like. And I think that's what costed Trump the election was a lot of Mitt Romney Republicans didn't vote for him. Um, will that happen again? I have no idea. I think the Republican Party is a lot smarter than the Dems <laughs> and they really fall in line for their people. But we'll, you know, we'll see, we'll see. I, I don't know where this can go, honestly. I don't think anyone does and CPAC is kind of it's kind of setting up what we're gonna see. It's insane to see too that his his you know, he he's still leading in all these polls and and I know CPAC is a different crowd from conservatives as a whole. Like an Arizona conservative differs from a Georgia uh, conservative. You know right? Like they're, they're different kinds. But it's just funny to see where this is leading to. <sighs> I couldn't tell you. I could not tell you where this is gonna go. Um, and I'm, I'm actually really ecstatic to see Trump come back, which by the way, I've been watching CPAC and it's all election fraud stuff. And I don't know how they're going to, they keep calling him president Trump. I know they're, they're, you know, riding on the coattails of that, but do people still believe that he, he's president? I'm hearing, like, I had a colleague tell me that he's going to come back president, uh, as president during March. Um, do people still believe that? Did, did, are we crazy? Am I crazy? I feel like I'm crazy. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see how, how the, how it goes. Um, 
God, it's so funny though. This is so hilarious. I, I don't know. The rift in the party is tr is is there. I'm not gonna you know undermine that. But it's such a weird rift. Like, you know how there's a Bernie Sanders side of of the of the the Democratic Party, but there's a more progressive socialism esque uh, wing of people who I think have a lot of disagreements. You know, even fundamentally have disagreements. Whereas the Republican Party, I think it's more rhetoric. I think it's like, hey, look, you know, I still want harsher immigration. I still want this, this, that. I want this, this, that. And they're just riffed on on the the approach. Like Donald Trump is an in-your-face kind of guy. And, and, you know, call him what you will. I don't like the guy, but Jesus Christ, he gets it done. Like for the Republican Party, he was a godsend. He got the... He got the stuff they wanted. He got three judicial picks. That's insane. He picked so many judges throughout the states. In Arizona, when I was looking at my ballot, I saw nothing but Trump picks as my uh, judges for our district. So th the dude really pushed the ideology of the Republican Party and really got shit done for them. Of course, not for, let's be real, everyday Americans. No one felt his, his, his perks unless you had like a big corporation, right? But, you know, he really did appease those people and get and get it done for them now of course his more populist stuff he was never going to do i mean the dude was partially like in favor for medicare for all yet he just perpetuated the system we were in so you know the dude is 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 a populist when he has to be but he didn't push any populism uh ideology when he was in office so it's 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 funny but uh yeah i don't know the guy definitely can't win the election at this rate, like if he can, if he perpetuates this election fraud, if he dismisses the Capitol riots, if he continues to be vile in that sense, there's going to be a push for the Republicans who want like the nice rhetoric. But at the end of the day, I think they also do still vote for him. Is it enough? No, because we saw in the last election. But is there going to be enough people to hate Trump? Like if Biden just cruises it, which he can, he really can. Biden can cruise it not do anything and so far he's done pretty good stuff he was an executive order monster and really retracted a lot of trump stuff which is an lu like it was a setup for him just do the basics we need to go back to the iran deal that should have been an easy one and he didn't do it but then we went back to the paris climate agreement those are great you know and, and so biden has a lot of setup to just do a cruise presidency like just cruise control it and just chill and he could easily win he could easily uh a win again because trump's rhetoric is so hard to sell to some uh people like i know the middle to left leaning people who hate the democrats aren't going to vote for this guy i know the people who are center right they're not really going to vote for this guy um it's the you know the hard sycophants who are always going to be die hard for him but at the same time it's this like you know, like the, my, I was arguing with this with my, my father and he was saying like when the cult leader dies, the cultists go away. I don't think it's going to dissipate though. We're seeing that right now at CPAC. They had this poll where Trump was like 95% approval rating. Like the guy, even before COVID, he was uh, 90 some percent in the Republican Party. He's favored. He's, he's loved and people don't want to leave him. So we're, we're combating and we're going against a crazy party. And the Republican Party, you know that. I, I think they... I'm hearing like murmurs of like Pence making up with him, Mitch being on his side. I think Mitch knows like I can't let this guy hate the Republican Party or we're going to lose. Like they're not idiots. They're just monsters. So I, I can see Trump um, basically controlling the Republican Party. Is that going to win the elections? I don't know. I think it's – I but I think the Republicans are fucked. They can't get rid of this guy. They can't. Um, he's Reagan. He is a Reagan. And – it's going to be hard to cut this man loose. I'm excited, though. I'm excited. I want to see what they bring because I, I hope to God the Democrats don't use this as a way to um, pace themselves. Like, oh, we don't have to go as hard. Um, you know, I'm, heard, I'm already hearing Biden bombing Syria. Like, great. Thanks, dude. You, you really make me proud to vote. Like, it was sad because the first weeks of his presidency, which I think most people kind of called, was that, oh, yeah, he was doing some left-wing agendas, the Paris climate. He was in talks with Iran. Again, we, we kind of soiled that because he's not going in with it. But, you know, he, he came in pretty favorably. He had an extension on student loans, which affected me. Like, now I have a student, phone, student loan deferment payment because of Biden. I don't need it as much as others do, but Jesus Christ, I know people who are thankful and blessed for that now can he just <laughs> cancel the student debt save us all and and help 
you know, stimulate the economy by having a whole new group of people willing to spend more money because they don't have this burden of debt. That shouldn't have been put on them to begin with. You know what I mean? Like, there should be uh, uh, this left-wing push because you're going to get the left-wingers on your side, bro. And right now, you're just kind of playing center field. But he's doing good. He's doing center-left until, you know, you have the Syrian bombings. And I have to look at myself and say, I voted for this guy. I killed, I partially killed some Syrian kids. And, and it, this is a very philosophical mindset where... <sighs> Am I to blame for Biden and his bombing of Syria? I mean, yeah, but I didn't vote for him for that, right? And and I mean, that's the shitty, you know, I, I got to take away my agency in some sense where it's like I voted for this, but not this. Like, that's not how the world works. But at the same time, you know, I voted for, you know, I didn't vote for Trump because his rhetoric and his policies were so egregiously wrong. I thought by this guy, even if it meant being the bare minimum president that I expect him to be where he doesn't do anything, at least he's not pushing us further to the right. He's not going to pick another judicial judge that that counters left wing policies. He may favor, you know, businesses and corporations more than people, but not more so than Trump. Like that was my mindset. But you know, I have to sit there and go, and I voted for a guy who bombed Syria, killed brown kids who looked like me. He killed brown men and women who looked like me on a war where we shouldn't even be there. Like, you know, it's one thing to be like, well, it is what it is we're there, but he could easily just pull out. And, and, and I know there's nuances with that. We could leave a vacuum like we did with Iraq or what was it? Um, Pakistan? Uh, Afghanistan? But at the same time, like I don't care. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want my 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 country soiled in the blood of Iraqi, uh, of Pakistanis. Like it, it just. I can't. I can't sleep at night knowing that. How monstrous am I? Am I part of this? But then at the same time, like I mean, that's the the truth of the world. So it, it's not favorable right now for myself. Like I I don't I don't feel good knowing that I voted for this man. But a part of me is like, well, I mean, it is what I had to do. What I had to do. Like I'm not. It's not my fault that these are what, you know, I voted for Bernie. I didn't, he, he would have been a non-interventionist. I wholeheartedly believe that. And I voted for this guy because it was other policies I thought that would lessen, that I could, I could help a little bit alleviate the issues there. But in the regards of war, I had a feeling he was a warmonger. I mean, the guy was a warmonger way before <laughs> he was ever president. So it, I'm not surprised, but Jesus Christ, what a mirror to my face when I hear that we bomb Syria. God, what a disappointment. And and so I hear that and it's like, guys, how about we just not do that and we can make the burden of voting a little bit easier? You know, like I was arguing with my father on this, but he was like, oh, I mean, the, it, Trump is so much worse. Like, oh, I get it. But we still we had a president that we thought was better and he still bombed Syria. Like, I, I just I, I don't want to defend this fucking fool. Also, as I'm watching CPAC, they're putting videos of AOC and, <laughs> and and Bernie and it's straight boogeyman music. I think they had uh, that George Soros. Yeah, they had George Soros. Just straight, just, they're going to put Stalin there and then the Venezuelan president. Oh my God, that's so hilarious. By the way, um, one thing I'm not going to even give a, a, a little bit of leeway is that how about we just leave Venezuela alone? I know they're a dictatorship. I know they're fucking awful. They're not going to attack us. They're not going to hurt us. They're a shitty little country with nothing but a dictator. And they just have a lot of oil. That's Let's be real. I don't want to interact with Venezuela. I fucking can't stand that we're even looking at them like an enemy. Biden made a statement saying like, oh, we got to talk about the Maduro uh, uh, dictatorship and its dangers. He's not a danger. They're a dinky little country. They're not going to affect us. And yeah, it's awful what's going on over there. But how about we remove the sanctions and then let's fucking talk about humanity. We're killing more people with our sanctions. This man's a monster. But if we're going to take it that way, then I guess we got to attack Russia because Russian president is a piece of shit. Oh, we got to attack China because Xi Jinping fucking Winnie the Pooh over there is a monster. Like, do we have to attack everyone? You know what I mean? Like, come on, dog. It's not our fucking war. I don't give a fuck what Yan Yahoo's doing. He's a monster. Let's just not contribute it to it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care about these people. They're not my people. Like, I don't have Medicare here. We don't have Medi an Medicare expansion for our people here, and yet we're putting bombs over there to help our, I quote unquote, you know, my quotation marks are going fucking full on. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to bomb fucking uh, Papua New Guinea if it means we have to fucking, you know, Stop a dictatorship. I don't care. I don't care. I want my people here safe and sound. And yet we're going to China. 
uh, uh, for materials and goods, and we just look past it because oh, it's business. It is what it is. But they they're having a, a genocide of the Uyghurs. So we're really picking and choosing our villains, right? Like well, let's support Saudi Arabia. Which to be fair, to be fair, Biden did stop. I think there was an executive bill to stop the atrocities there. In some sense, like kind of alleviate it with our expansions of our uh, uh, military. I think we, were, we had like this big military budget that was kicking in where we were going to get some money from them. I'm, I'm probably butchering the story. So that, hey, great. That's a step forward. Is it enough? No. But it's a great step forward that I don't think we would have saw with Trump. So I hear that and I go, okay, my vote was was pretty good, you know. Ultimately, I just, I hear these things and it's like if, if we want to win the election, we have to do good. If I know that we're not going to invade Venezuela or we're going to bomb Pakistan or Syria, I want to vote for that guy. And I know a million people like me. They, they, I just, I just know there's people out there who are like, I, I'm sick of bombing these people. I'm sick of killing these fucking brown people. So that, you know, I think we could win. We could win in a landslide if we, if we, if we uh, contest these these ideologies of warmongers. You know, again, that's not on. I, I that's if it was easy, it would have been done. And 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 the shitty thing is that like a lot of people, that's not even near their top priority. But you know, with with Biden. His top priority should have been giving people an expansion on Medicare. Like, everyone qualifies for some sort. Like, I, I shouldn't have to pay for, for medical costs um, with insurances and stuff during a pandemic. Like, it's just uh, it's atrocious. It's so atrocious. And my, my head is spinning with the idea that we just can't, like... Can we just take 10% of the budget and just give it to teachers from the military? Can we just take 10% um, and do an expansion on Medicare and Medicaid? Can we just take care of the homeless people that are, are filling the streets because there's a vacancy uh, number that we've never seen in our in our lifetime because it's so huge with the pandemic? Like, come on, we, we could win these. We can win these elections if we favor more of the people, but, you know, we'll see. It is what it is. And, uh, I think I think in time we're we're getting there. I, I fucking hope I hope it's not a thing that I'm just saying to myself. Which by the way, as I'm watching the CPAC, Trump has not spoken yet, and I'm really waiting for him to talk. And uh, they're they're playing like weird stuff. Like I think the Chinese protest. Okay, they are playing. Why are they playing the Chinese pro? Yeah, they're playing GG Ping's like. Protest. I'm so confused. Are they? We are receiving now. Well done, everyone. I'm so confused. Hong, they're playing the Hong Kong protest like coverage. I, I I think it's part of that whole like there's Biden memes where I see like them shitting on. They keep saying like Biden's some dumb fuck. Like literally, he's like a Chinese guy with some racist name. Like some dumb fuck. I think that's what. They're showing a CPAC Hong Kong. I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm glad they're showing the protesters in a favorable light, though. I'm watching the Hong Kong protest, and they're showing the protesters, um, you know, as as patriotic and you know wanting to help out their country. But they're the the Chinese people are wearing American flags. Really? What the fuck? They have Trump flags. That's ins I didn't know that. This is crazy. This is insane. Wanchi, thank you, President Trump. Thank you for signing. President Trump is changing. Let's meet in Hong Kong. Thank you, the U.S. Senate for passing the U.K. human. Oh, okay, okay. So I guess it was like a uh, human rights legislation that Trump passed. Good. I mean, I gotta, I gotta read it. But Jesus Christ, let's favor the fucking protesters. It's funny though, because Mr. Trump didn't he say like when the looting starts, the start starts, <laughs> when the looting starts, the shooting starts because it was the reaction to like the George Floyd protest where people were like looting and shit, and he said like they should get shot, and then none of that rhetoric was there when we had the Capitol riots. Isn't that fucking hilarious? Um, that's so funny. I'm so confused on what's going on with this Hong Kong protest. Cause it, I don't think this would show CPAC in a favorable light because wouldn't it be? Oh, they're showing the hill. That's funny. I can't stand Sagar, but I, I really respect Crystal, and I, I don't think she's a grifter. Sorry, I'm now I'm just going off on a major tangent. Right now, CPAC is just showing some clips of different news coverages around the world, and uh, I, I think it's trying to show Trump as being like anti-dictatorial, even though he he's trying to throw out the election. <laughs> um. I guess it's more CPAC. Like CPAC, I guess, has like a reach to to Hong Kong and all of that. Hong Kong. Hmm. Nah. Well, yeah. 
So, um, I try to get a glimpse of maybe Trump's speech, but it, it looks like I'm running out of time. And then my game is having a terrible internet connection when I was recording this, so it's it's terrible. So um, I'm just gonna wrap it up around here. But thank you guys so much. I post videos every week, uh, usually these gameplays and like freeform talks about like politics. And then I have a week, uh, or sorry, like a, uh, at the end of the month. I post a, a longer form video with more researched, uh, scripted, you know, stuff. So I will uh, try to post that by the end of this month or the beginning of the March, depending on how, how soon I get it done. But yeah, thank you so much. I hope you all have a good one. Send me any suggestions of what I should be talking about in regards to politics and stuff. But thank you all, and I hope you all have a great day. Stay safe. Don't get COVID. Um, also get this new outbreak mode. It's so fucking fun and worth every penny. All right. Thank you guys. You have a good one and follow my Twitter and pop that pussy.